Hi, this is Explorations in Economic History. And we have reached 1917. Today we'll have a look at the revolution and the context in which Lenin came to power. And we'll look at what happened when the theory was put into practice. First, we'll start with a short video. This army fights on. These Cossacks have marched thousands of miles across snow-clad plains. They boast the greatest endurance of any soldiers. They will die by the thousands in the frozen trenches of Russia. In the villages behind the lines, people are starving. There is talk of revolution. Wounded soldiers returning from the front listen and think, why should they fight? At the front, troops begin to mutiny. The army stops fighting. They will go home and divide up the land, kill those who stand in their way. In Moscow, Kerensky heads a new government. It endures six months. And then come the ten days that shake the world. The masses take charge of their destiny. With rifle, bayonet, machine gun, the Bolsheviks seize power. Parades are held. These banners say, join the Bolshevists. The new era is here. Bodies of nameless heroes are given little parades. And the 300-year-old Romanov dynasty ends. An empire is trampled down. Trotsky harangues the troops. Later, he is banished, and the Red Army is born. It is drawn up in Moscow's Red Square. Its commander, Trotsky, takes the salute. That winter, great famine spreads throughout Russia. The American Red Cross feeds millions, and still millions die. In Moscow, the Kremlin is covered with snow, and behind its walls is Lenin, who heads the new order. His wife foresaw this great revolution. She'll be called Lenin the seer, the incorruptible prophet, the father of Bolshevism. It was the February Revolution, which truly was a popular uprising and a people's revolution that put the provisional government into power. The provisional government was very popular and supported at the start and was made up mainly of people who had been in the Congress before the Duma. So, of course, there were also problems that people had with many of the politicians because they were moneyed interests and quite bourgeois and, and distant from the peasants and poor proletariat. However, they were popular at the beginning. They had taken over from the Tsar, but they lost popularity quite quickly because they refused to take any serious stands on anything and especially they refused to consider peace. They wanted to continue fighting World War I, which was becoming far less and less popular every day as more and more people died and there was hunger and shortage and starvation and people were dying at the front, young kids dying at the front every day. So as World War I became less popular and people wanted peace, the provisional government became less popular and the Bolsheviks became more popular because the Bolsheviks had always stood for peace. Although their extreme policies were not very popular with especially the peasants, they were still gaining popularity for their call for peace, and those who didn't know much more about the Bolsheviks besides peace, besides their call for peace, started to support them. And their representation in the Soviets was increasing, and their popular support in the streets was increasing. Their slogan for peace, land, and bread was very popular, but was misleading because the Bolsheviks did not intend to allow the peasants to own their land in the long term. They were willing to redistribute the land, to take it away from the landlords for sure, but then of course they would 
eventually want to socialize all the land and collectivize agriculture, which the peasants did not actually want. The Bolsheviks' pa slogan, all power to the Soviets, was also popular and lent credibility to them after they gained power because they did pass all power to the Soviets, in other words, away from the Duma and to the Soviets. However, they also wanted the Soviets to be under their control and to become part of their workers' state, their one-party state. And of course, this wasn't what people really had in mind when they supported the slogan, all power to the Soviets. They didn't expect all other parties to be outlawed and for the Soviets to be directly under Bolshevik control.